Hello and welcome to Greece Public Library's book break for today, February 17th. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here. I moderate the Pints and Prose book discussion group. And as always, I am joined by my intrepid colleague, Claire. Oh, I like that, intrepid. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Claire. I do the Historical Book Club on Facebook and also as the page turns. So Excellent. And today we are going to do just a roundup of some of the books we've been reading, right? No particular theme or anything going on today. No, no, no. I've got some mysteries. I've got a nonfiction, so. Nice. All right. Well, do you want to kick us off? Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. And hopefully I'm keeping these in my ears. <laughs> I need to stay still. Okay. So my first one is Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. Um, some of you may be familiar with the fact that he does YouTubes under the same name. He started this after the George Floyd um, murder, I guess. And uh, so he tried to start some conversations with white people um, to kind of improve race relations. So the way it starts out and this kind of uh, was good for me, it's racism 101 pretty much. Mm. Um, and as you know, I've been trying to read about more social justice racism, you know, get more information. Um, but he starts with this quote, for all of you who lack an honest black friend in your life, consider me that friend. My arms are open wide friends, my heart too. So with these words, he invites us to the table, uh, invites white people to pull up a chair, join the conversation about race and racism, um, knowing that we won't get anywhere until we have these uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. So he has a bunch of different topics, the way it's broken out. It's, um, he has a question that he's received and then he kind of gives answers and what he feels about it. So um, some of the questions he addresses are, how do you bring up race with minorities? Should I say black or African-American? Um, what are the best ways to get rid of your implicit bias? Um, what about reverse racism? Is it real? I'm poor, how can you say I have white privilege? Um, what systems need to be changed. So it's, uh, it was interesting, fairly quick read. Um, if you don't like reading, you could probably watch the videos, but you know, I highly suggest that you read the book. There's a lot of facts in here um, and just a good way to kind of springboard your journey if you want to learn more about racism and how someone of, of color would feel. Not that, you know, he doesn't proclaim to be feeling everything, you know, sure. um, because of course he has his own perspective and different background. So he was a professional football player. He grew up in a pretty affluent home. Um, mm -hmm. And that was kind of interesting. He went through his part of the journey. His parents, I believe, are Nigerian. So he came here. Um, they didn't let him participate in a lot of different, you know, culture of, of typical teens his age. So he went to a, mm -hmm. a private school. And when he got to college is when he first, as he said, started experiencing life with people of color. So a kind of unique um, viewpoint on, on racism in America, not by any means the only one, but just, you know, it was an interesting read. Oh. Thanks. And do I recall that you had watched some of the YouTube videos and that's how you knew about I did. Um, and he interviewed, um, I know one of them I watched was with Matthew McGonaghy. Uh, another one was with the entire uh, Gaines family, you know, the Magnolia hmm. family yeah, yeah, Gaines yeah. who, and that one was interesting because it was like, they started by saying they're trying to teach their children to be colorblind, like not mm. see color. And he was saying that that really is not the way to go, like people should be seen and appreciated for their mm -hmm. color. So yeah, sure. it, it was, it's been interesting. So nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to add that one to my list. Um, yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Um, I don't have a nonfiction today. I have three actually very different books. Um, I have a historical and a Western and a fantasy. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so let's start with the Western, which is probably also the one I'm not going to say I didn't like it. I just probably didn't like it as much as the others. But um, this one is Whiskey When We're Dry by John Larison. Um, and it's a, it was a very 
interesting Western. It had a different kind of take. So our main character is Jessalyn Harney. Um, she lives somewhere in the Southwest territories um, before they're all states. So we are post-Civil War, but before sort of everything has been folded into the Union. Um, it sounds like she's probably somewhere in Utah or thereabouts. Um, so she lives on this remote homestead with her father and her brother. Uh, her mother died um, giving birth to her. So she has sort of no female figure in her life. Um, and the first chunk of the book is just her growing up um, in this sort of isolated, like little house on the prairie kind of existence. Um, although there is like, there's no sugarcoating any part of this lifestyle in the whole book. Um, like you really see how tough it is to homestead in this time period. Um, but her father dies, which sets off the next part of the action. And Jessalyn um, is not able to maintain the homestead on her own. So she decides she needs to go track down her brother who has left home previously and is now an outlaw oh. in, in the Southwest. Um, so they're, you know, wanted posters for Noah Harney. Um, so as Jocelyn sort of sets off on this journey to track down her brother and her goal is to bring him back to live with her, to be a family, to work this homestead together. Um, she realizes that she's not going to get very far as a girl traveling by herself in this territory. So she dresses as a boy and sets off on this adventure and it is an adventure and lots of stuff happens. Um, and so again, I, I did find that sort of gender flip very interesting. Um, the female perspective in all of these spaces that are just full of men um, because it's the only way that she can protect herself. Um, what I didn't love about the book is that for me, the pace was super, super slow. <laughs> like I just, I needed, I needed him to get on with it just, just a little bit. So the book did sort of drag for me. Um, it's an interesting character study, um, an interesting study of like a particular place and time, um, the Southwest in the late 1800s. Um, but for me, the, the pace did kind of take away from it because um, I just felt myself like, okay, and then, and then. <laughs> um, but it did all wrap up, not necessarily in a satisfying way, but all of the loose threads did come together at the end. So there's that. Don't you wonder sometimes if there was a nano remo of, of like how to write a Western with mm -hmm. the ex exact time period in either, mm -hmm. you know, because I just yeah. finished that one outlaw mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's not exact, but there are a lot of similarities. Right. You know? She went and dressed as a, a man and joined a mm -hmm. band of outlaws and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, our, our culture has romanticized that period so much um, that like that's that sort of dusty cowboy riding into town, like two pistols on his hips. Like that's kind of like cemented in our cultural yeah. memory. Um, but then, you know, the authors are like, well, but what if what if there was a lady? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, recommended with some slight reservations. I okay. I like the name. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll start with another one that actually moved a little slow, but it, it, by the time I got through it, I actually thought it was very good. So, um, and I am losing. <laughs> Watching me struggle. I'm such a pro. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. I need to sit perfectly still. I've ordered new new headsets, people. So next week. Uh Long Bright River by Liz mm -hmm. Moore. We actually did this as a book club for mm -hmm. as the page turns, and it was very well received. You know, nice. Um 
someone actually brought up that it was on President Obama's list of one mm. of his favorite books of last year, which okay. I hadn't picked up on that, but that was kind of interesting. But um, it's, it's, it builds itself as a mystery, but it's a story of two sisters that grow up in Philadelphia who, who go on to lead totally opposite lives. Um, older sister Mickey is a Philadelphia beat policeman um, and frequently sees her younger sister, Casey, who is struggling with drug addiction on her beat. Um, the crux of the story begins when Casey goes missing, just as a string of murders um, in the neighborhood begins to happen of, of other women in similar you know, living mm. circumstances. So the story alternates between the past and the present um, between the two sisters. So you learn the background of the family told from the point of view of Mickey, the older sister, um, of drug addiction, poverty, police corruption, and trying to live life with the hand you've been dealt. Um, so even though it's been, kind of been billed as a thriller, because you have this murder mysteries happening and there is one more than one murder, to me it was more of a story of this complicated relationship between these two sisters um, and the events that take them down these very divergent paths. Um, and it's interesting because the sisters do cross paths occasionally, um, but then they get to a point where something happens, which you will eventually learn, and they stop speaking. Mm -hmm. So um, as, the, as the murders start to uptick, Mickey is more and more afraid of, for her sister and determined to, to find her um, and find out what happened. So. Um, it's not a comfortable book to read because it, it highlights a lot of the crisis of addiction and just how it affects the family. You know, the horrible trickle down effect mm -hmm. um, with all the people, um, the babies born to addicts, you know, the withdrawal, what they go through. Um, so yeah, but it was, you know, it really kept me going. And by the mm -hmm. time, you know, the time you get into like the midway of the book, the midway of the book is it's a tag gone so it's a long book it's over 400 pages I okay so it's it's not a short read but it is a very good read you know liz moore is a great writer and i would um i would definitely read another one of hers i'm going to investigate and see if she mm -hmm. has written others but long bright river if you're looking nice. for a book club choice it would be a great one uh, okay. And it does end on a somewhat hopeful note. You mm -hmm. don't really find out exactly what happens. Well, you, you do, but I don't want to give too much away, like spoilers. But sure. there, there is some hope um, in the story. It's not nice. just all like Debbie Downer all the way. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I get it. Those, those books can be hard to read. Oh, exactly. Yeah. If There's you didn't have nothing to sort of leaven it. Something positive in it, then yeah, you just pretty much open up a bottle of wine and throw <laughs> the book aside. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so my next book is Marion Lane and the Midnight Murders by T. A. Wilberg. Um, this is a debut novel. Um, it is part historical fiction, part mystery. Um, and I just realized I should have written down a couple of the key names because they're now fleeing from my mind. So <laughs> the, the basic premise is Marion Lane is our protagonist. Um, the book is set in the years after World War II in London. So it's, um, a time period of historical fiction that I don't think we get to see that often, where mm -hmm. the war is over, all of the men have come home and sort of pushed the women out of some of the jobs that they had started to take on during the war. Um, the economy is still struggling. Um, people are having a tough time finding work. Um, it's just kind of not a very great time to be in London. Um, so Marion uh, is a young woman. She's in her early 20s. She lives with her grandmother. Her mother has passed away. Um, she and her grandmother don't particularly get along. Um, and her grandmother is like perpetually trying to set her up 
to oh, get her married off and secure because like that's the mindset right like she needs this is the way to make sure she's taken care of um which is not really what marion is interested in but uh marion discovers um this place and this is the the name that i have lost is the name of the the agency um but it's basically like an underground private investigators and it's so it's literally underground like the offices are in these tunnels underneath london tunnels and caverns um and underground also in the sense that they are not recognized by the police like they are not police they're not a state institution they are their own kind of little clandestine thing um and there are these sort of drop boxes all over london where if you know about them you can like put in a tip or send in a question and these investigators will possibly take the case and investigate whatever you've got going on so um it's a little bit almost like a steampunk James Bond, except there's no, it's not steampunk, it's like clockwork. So mm -hmm. if you can imagine all of James Bond's little gadgets, but everything is clockwork, um, which is interesting. Um, and like just, just plausible <laughs> that it could be possible, right? Like um, there's no magic. Um, there's just like, could you, could you really do that with clockwork? Maybe I suppose, yeah. but like just, just enough that you kind of let it skate by. Um, so the main chunk of the, um, the plot. So the, the midnight murder of the title, um, one of the, um, investigators is actually murdered inside the agency where, which no one is even supposed to know about. Um, as far as they can tell, no one was there with her, but she's dead. So Marion gets sort of pulled into this investigation, trying to figure out what happened. So I won't say too much about that because, um, you know, I don't want to give the mystery part away. Um, but this was a really fun, um, quick paced read like there's a lot of action the plot keeps moving um in an interesting setting in this sort of james bondy spy clockwork place um and fun characters so i highly recommend it i think she probably was setting it up to maybe start a series in this world with these characters which i would definitely read um the next ones it's not um you know the most serious book you've ever read in your life, but it was a lot of fun. So, Marion Lane and the Midnight That sounds really good, actually, because you know me. I, mm -hmm. I do love my British mysteries. So, speaking yeah. of which, Ooh. we're on the same page. So, I have Ooh. Osmond, The Thursday Murder Club, also set in Britain. And, uh, <laughs> You know, as you know, I'm having my severe uh, Vera withdrawal and mm -hmm. watching all these like Acorn and Britbox, you know, trying to get myself, you know, into a, a different mystery. But um, this one was really fun because it's in a, a very posh retirement village mm -hmm. in Great Britain. Um, you have four unlikely friends that meet in the jigsaw room to discuss unsolved crimes. So <laughs> Together, they call themselves the Thursday Murder Club. So it's Elizabeth, Joyce, Ibrahim, and Ron. Um, so they're all like pushing 80, but they have a few tricks up their sleeve. Um, and the, the local developer who is um, did their retirement community ends up dead. Um, so, and he was in the midst of kind of some shady business deals to buy more mm. and Ban the community so there's lots of, of possible red herrings of people that may have wanted him dead um, and also one of the members of the murder club his name is Ron his son was a, um, a fighter in England had quite a large following he's now past his prime but he appears on a lot of shows like Dancing with the Stars and other like British reality shows um, a picture of him is found like in a group 
next to the body. Mm -hmm. So he's tied into it personally, you know, because, you know, why is this picture of his son, you know, there? So um, it, it really is very funny. The, like you were saying about plausibility. Mm -hmm. So what they do to get the, the facts is they, they hook up with this policeman and kind of promise her um, information and help solving the case. But, you know, that was the element of, of disbelief for me because I don't <laughs> think a police person would be allowed to give information back and forth right. to a group of 80 year old people living in the, you know, retirees, retirees. Uh, so it's, um, it's kind of the way it's, it's written in chapters, but then you also have diary entries hmm. from Joyce, who is one of the newer members of the murder club. And, um, She's kind of funny because she's a little man crazy, has a crush in the thing. So you're learning about her through these diary entries and how thrilled she is to be part of this group. And, you know, she kind of gives you her viewpoint on some of the other characters. But um, there's lots of red herrings. There's a lot of mysterious backstories about people. Um, it's perfect if you like, you know, a cozy mystery with a little more substance to it. Mm -hmm. um, but... It, it like you said it was a lot of fun it was a nice, nice fun winter read you know set in britain excellent yes what could be better it, exactly you know yeah nice uh so my last book is actually one from my stack of shame last year i'm slowly but surely sort of eking them out and it is the city we became by nk jemison um and I loved this book. Um, N.K. Jemisin is um, one of my favorite fantasy authors. And most of her other books are like high fantasy. So like another world in another universe with like completely different way of life, not connected to our reality at all, really. Um, whereas this one is set in New York, in New York City. Um, in sort of the present day. And the premise of the book is that um, as a city becomes um, bigger and more complex and has more sort of history and mythology and soul to it, um, those cities actually come alive. And there is like a, an avatar, a person that is sort of the physical embodiment of the city. Um, and that person acts sort of as the, the protector for the city and, you know, shepherd for the city. Um, and in New York, um, something slightly different happens, which is that um, instead of just having one avatar, so there is one person that is New York as a whole, but then also each of the five boroughs has its own avatar. Um, so if you have any interest in New York City at all, sort of the, the character of it, um, this book is fantastic because she really does go into sort of the, the character of each of these separate chunks of New York and like, what does it mean to be a New Yorker? Like, you know, what's the difference between someone from the Bronx or someone from Queens? Um, and sort of the, the, I keep using the word character and I have no other synonym <laughs> to put in there, but like the feel of each of those different places is different. Um, I'll be honest. Then, there you go. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and then she also gets into sort of um, physics and art history and pop culture and all of these separate um, pieces, but ties them back into one cohesive narrative. And the sort of um, the plot of the book that gets it moving is that um, something is trying to attack the avatars and attack the city and prevent them from sort of coming together and finding each other to be able to fully protect the city of New York. Um, and it definitely is set up to be the first in a series. Most of her books are, there's um, usually at least two and sometimes three or four in all of the series that she writes. Um, ah, so first book in series, 
uh, yeah, for yeah. your um, reading challenge, also author of color. Um, but it was, it was really fun. Um, so there's the sort of fantasy elements in action, but overlaid on top of very real um, places and feel. So that was, that was interesting. Um, if you have read um, American Gods or Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, mm -hmm. um, this book has a similar feel to those, um, although it is very particular to New York City, I would say, as opposed to America as a whole, like American Gods or um, London for Neverwhere. Um, Sounds but, like it would make a great TV show too. Yeah, for sure. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that one gets adapted. Um, American Gods is, um, yeah. they've got a series for that one. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping if her pattern remains consistent, the next book should come out in about a year. Um, so I, I try not to start series that aren't fully written. Thank you, George R.R. R. Martin for spoiling that yeah. for me forever. Um, but I'm definitely gonna be looking for the next books in, the, in that series. Did he not finish Game of Thrones? No, he stalled out um, between, right now he's writing book six of a planned seven book series. And it's been at least six years since the last book came out. I mean, he's never gonna finish. Oh, that's horrible. It's never gonna happen, yeah. And there was a big gap between four and five too, but it was only maybe like three or four years. Yeah. And he's just blown past that now. It's never gonna happen, it's fine. That's, that's just evil. Yeah. 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 That one sounded good though. Uh, yes. I might have to give that one a try. Yeah, and if fantasy, like high fantasy other worlds is not your bag, um, I would still recommend this one because it is so rooted in our reality. There's just like a little bit, and it's not even like magic necessarily. Um, yeah, so I think you could still probably wrap your head around this one without too much trouble. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So let us know what you've been reading to get through this mm -hmm. winter. That's getting colder by the day. So. Uh, Absolutely. Especially uh, if you have any British mysteries for me or even there you something go. to watch on TV. <laughs> all years. Yes. Always looking for our next uh, British cop show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, as always, please let us know in the comments if you've read any of these books or if you have recommendations for us. Um, and we will be back in about two weeks. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.